What's going on, guys? This is Brimstone's Gaming here with Tech Spec Podcast, a little first time podcast for this channel. Let's see how this works. With me today, I have. With me today, I have. <laughs> Hi, I'm Geek Essentials or Shaner123, and I hope this goes well. <laughs> Great start! Great start! 10 out of 10! Rambo! Uh, I'm Rambo with Rambo's Corner, and uh, we are just going to hope and pray for this one, so we'll see. I'm... Oh, Rex. I'm Rex. <laughs> <laughs> yes! We're off on to a great start. So, we're going to be talking about all things gaming tonight. Figured what the hell. We're going to see what happens, see how this goes. We're going to go ahead and try to make this work uh so <coughs> let's talk about gaming you guys where did you guys start off in gaming did you guys start off on pc or did you start off on console a little bit of a mixture of the two let me know let's start off with of course rags i thought i was fourth but all right Hi. <laughs> <laughs> i thought you said you said we agreed that i would bring up the rear but that's okay <laughs> That's okay. I can start from the top and work my way down. <laughs> now, actually, I was, um, I grew up in a household, and I'm thankful for it now, though at the time it would be considered torture, where my access to the internet was extremely limited. Um, I was not allowed to have video game consoles. Um, pretty much what I had, for the most part, was a Game Boy growing up, and to get that Game Boy was a pretty big deal. Um, it was, it was the one, what was it called? The Game Boy, the Game Boy Advance where the buttons are on the side? Yeah. The one mm. that didn't have a light? Yeah. And then the SP came out, the one that flipped like a phone. Mm, boy! Moving on up. With the silver. Um, <laughs> that was for the most part what, that was my video gaming, was, um, just playing little handhelds, little Game Boys. But all my friends had consoles, and this was when I was very young, like grade school and stuff. Now, they had consoles. They had the original Xbox, PS2s, N64, stuff like that. I'd never played this stuff really at all. There was a mystique around it. It was something they talked about all the time, and I just kind of sat there going, yeah, okay, I know, what yeah, I know, yeah, me too, yeah. Huh. Um, <laughs> now, when I went and played at their house, at like sleepovers and stuff, no homo, I did really good. They're really, really good. <laughs> And I really liked it. It was tons of fun. And that kind of got me hooked into it. And what I ended up doing was I bought a DS because um, that was the next step up for me. I didn't tell my parents, but I did buy a DS. I bought an Xbox 360. Again, I didn't tell the M&P. Didn't tell them. Whenever they were like gone, I'd plug it up into the TV and stuff. Or when I went to someone's house, I'd bring it, that sort of thing. But I really, really liked it. It was a super awesome hobby. And I played Xbox until I was an <coughs> Xbox gamer exclusively until about three years ago. When I just got sick of the 360's performance, I think Battlefield 3 is what killed it for me. Battlefield 3 on the 360. Glorious poop graphics at God knows what resolution, 30 FPS, best case scenario. I just saw too much stuff about how the PC was great, and I jumped in and never looked back. Awesome. Now here I am, living my sad little life. In my studio apartment, alone, staring at monitors for 80% of my existence, making YouTube videos where I pretend to be a dog. And here we are. So there Wait, you, go. you were I'm pretending? No, I wasn't. Whoa. So, I was going to okay. say, man, I've got that unsub from this guy. This is like breaking news here. Nah. Yeah, I thought he was uh, like Air Bud. You know, I just thought he was real. <laughs> Air Bud. No, <laughs> it is actually, um, you know, I'm not going to say what the truth is because the mystique really is more magical. Yeah. So we're going to go with that. Okay. I, I can live with that. I can live with that in my life now. Rambo, what about you? Ah, wow. Well, I'm going to have to show my age here, but uh, I started with Pong. He's old as dirt. My, my first console was the actual Pong uh, console, which that's all you, the only game you had was Pong. Uh, two paddles, you just had you know, two people pushing a ball around. Um, and... Here we, you know, here we are growing up, I guess, all consoles. I was actually uh, introduced to the Xbox console originally back when it first came out, and I hated the controller. I could not stand it. So I sold it, got me a PlayStation, and was solely kind of a PlayStation gamer all the way through because they, they kind of had the exclusives that I liked. And this generation, actually, this is when I jumped to PC is because this generation, it seemed like 
I was paying and paying and paying more and more and more uh, these fees like with PlayStation Now or PlayStation Plus and then Xbox Live. And I was just, it seemed like I was not getting anything in return as far as performance wise. And everybody kept telling me kind of like what Rag said, everybody kept telling me about how great the PC was. And I decided, well, you know, why not? Everybody wanted me to build just a regular basic PC, you know, just, just an entry one. Like I'm and sick of I, paying for free games. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yes. Uh, I went to, I went and, you know, built a high end when I went for the enthusiast side and I haven't looked back. I, I, it's been the, one of the best things, uh, the best decisions I've made. Now, like you said, you've been on this this year, right? Uh, yes, uh, February is actually I just looked, and February is whenever I got my GPU and signed into GeoForce Experience, and I haven't looked back since. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may I add, this guy's almost got me beat on my fucking Steam account already, and he just got this. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> 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 very true, very true. <laughs> Geek Essentials! Go for My it. My earliest gaming memory was the Sega Master System. Uh, you know, like Rags, video games were kind of limited in my house growing up, but we did end up getting a Sega Genesis. Uh, we moved on to the N64. I played a lot at friends' house and in arcades. Uh, I played around with Windows 3.1, and I kind of really enjoyed wow. that, having to, uh, you know, type commands in and stuff like that. I really thought that was really cool, and I helped my, my dad build PCs at the time, and I just, I was really intrigued by it. Uh, so my last, like, console that I really fell in love with, I would say, is the PlayStation 3. And uh, toward the end of its life cycle, I built my first gaming PC, and like you guys, I never really looked back. I do own an Xbox One now, and I play it on a regular basis, but I prefer to play on the PC. Uh, the graphics, the performance, it's just amazing. You know, it's, it's not the consoles are bad, because uh, I grew up playing them, and I still play them today. I, I just prefer to play on the PC. All right, fair enough, or fair enough. All right, so a little bit about my background. I come from a small town called Golden Valley, Arizona. It's a little small Hickville. I was way out in the desert, and I was always a generation behind of all my friends. All my friends were on the N64. Guess what? This guy, I was still rocking the Super NES and the regular NES at that time. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't come up with a, with a lot of money. I, I didn't, you know, I wasn't this rich kid or anything. I lived out in the middle of nowhere in a Hick village type setting on a mountainside somewhere in a desert okay so far out in which it took three hours for police to get out there that's how bad this was <laughs> so i had to make do with what i had as a child i didn't have the nice tvs i didn't have any of that stuff so i really learned how to appreciate my consoles for when i had them um so i start off on the nintendo i worked my way up to the n64 obviously uh, I had a Game Boy. This is what, when I first got into mobile game. I got this. Uh, if you guys remember the old school Game Boys, the very first one that was like see through. Oh yes. Oh yeah. My first game on that was Final Fantasy Legends Two, and that's what kind of made me really fall in love with gaming. And then, of course, moved out, went to California, got into computer gaming before high school. Uh, my father had a system to where you typed in command lines in order to run all your games. My first game was Dragon Rider, which to me was like the best game ever at the time. <laughs> it was like hex and like dra uh, hex and like graphics, but you still rode around on this dragon, and it was pretty neat. It was either that or Pitfall. So, <laughs> oh, Pitfall. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So a lot of these, th you know, a lot of these things really helped progress my gaming habit. Or should I say, have cursed me with this gaming habit, depending on how you look at it with your wallet. Uh, <laughs> uh, here I am now. I own the Xbox One, the PS4, the Wii U. And I still have my P3. And overall, I'm, I'm happy with what I have. Uh, as far as consoles go, you know, I, I'm kind of right there with you guys. There's nothing like PC. There really isn't. Uh, the communities are so freaking wide and varied. Like, you really don't experience anything like it where everything's funneled into one situation right on the xbox or the p4 you only have the one community right and you have the one community that's usually pretty much splintered across all these different games where on pc you go to a site like say perfect world and they've got you know four hundred thousand people logged into the forums for say j dynasty or they have another game where another three hundred thousand people are playing and they're logged into different games you know you have all these different situations going on, like the Counter-Strike community, for instance. One of the biggest FPS 
uh, communities and oldest communities next to Halo that exist to the day. I mean, you don't get that on console, unfortunately. I wish you did, but you don't. Um, so I've been building PCs since high school. Uh, freshman year I started, and I still do it to this day. I love it. Um, I don't think I will ever give up PC. Um, now, since we got this all pretty much covered now, the way as far as the four of us goes, uh, you guys could be, you know, feel free at, during watching this video. Uh, let us know where your gaming beginning started from with your life and your experiences. What made you enjoy gaming, regardless if you're on console, regardless if you're on PC, it doesn't matter. Um, so, you guys, PC gaming, is it really necessary to upgrade every damn time something new comes out? <laughs> Yes, by the uh, by the Xbox 360. <laughs> <laughs> because no. yeah, because it had like um, Halo Reach. People still play that, right? Yeah, no? they, they play. Yeah? yeah, they play that a lot, actually. Oh, yeah, that's a good game. Yeah. All right, we're pro, pro PC. Um, uh, gosh, I, mean, I think I think a lot of this comes from. Years ago, and it's just the stuff that PC gaming really was many, many years ago when we were but we little lads, and it sticks. It sticks. People hear that, and they know, uh, and they hear about the past, how things used to be, and they just keep recirculating that information over and over. They keep putting it out there. They keep saying, this is how it is. Stick with your consoles. There's no reason to go to PC. Um, don't read reviews. Don't listen to reviews. Don't just just stick with your consoles. I mean, it's only like a, a year plus till the Scorpio comes out. Just keep, you know, stick with what you got. And I think a lot of people too. A lot of people too don't even think about PC when they talk about gaming. You go up to somebody and say, "Hey, what do you play games on?" Uh, and I, I bet a lot of them don't even think about PC in terms of gaming. Uh, there's still just a lot of people who are, you know, they're set and they're straight and narrow. I'm you know, I'm a PlayStation player. I'm an Xbox player. Maybe I have both. Or I have a Nintendo, and that's what I do. And a lot of people have made up their minds already. You see a lot of stuff now. People are, they've committed to buying the Scorpio. They're ready. Black Friday 2017, we're going to buy the Scorpio. And it, it doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter what information there is. They've made up their mind. They're part of their community, and they're sticking to their guns no matter what happens. No matter what happens. They've, um, they've put their chips in whatever analogy chips are used for this and they're not going to change even though that's e their thing that's even what even though but but what does it make sense and this is the reason why i was gonna why i was bringing this up and i'll give you guys a good example as to why i call bullshit on this okay i have literally sitting behind me right now my fiance's computer it's an i7 920 launch okay that's You're that living should, in sin. that should tell you how old this is it's it's running an r9270x launch okay Eight gigs of Sniper G Skill RAM on an original MSI gaming platform platinum. So I I don't understand where people understand. You know they think that these parts expire so fast. That tells you right there that PC has been built since two thousand and eight. <laughs> two thousand and eight people. I was running yeah, at fifty seven seventy um... all the way up until like three. Well, no, actually until the R nine. Yeah, yeah, up to the R nine. I gave it away to a buddy of mine. <laughs> yeah this computer i built i've been changing things not because i've needed to just because i wanted to i mean i've got it just arrived in the mail yesterday i got 16 gigs of ram just sitting right here next to me i just haven't put in yet just because i just because i wanted to not because i needed to it was never a necessity <clears throat> absolutely people it's all about that you don't have to settle when you are on an xbox when you're on a playstation when you're on a nintendo you take what you're given and you really can't change a lot um a, a an ability to change a, a graphic option to change a frame rate to the that is without a that's an exception it's not a rule it's basically a blessing if you even have the option to change something like that yeah but you don't have to settle you don't have to just take what you're given on pc you can tailor it to how you want to play it's all about your ability to make the experience what you want it to be. But not yeah, it's so versatile. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's not so much just a gaming platform. And a lot of people like to tie this up with just gaming because this this fictitious crap that's going on right now in the gaming community, they believe that because we're all gamers that we only use it for gaming. And that's what I've always tried to stress to people. If if you want something to game on, great. PC would be a good way to go, but it doubles as a workstation regardless of how you build it. You could put in anywhere from a mid-sized GPU to a higher-end enthusiast grade, and guess what? You're going to be able to 
edit video. <coughs> you're gonna be able to do your digital art with it. If you're, you know, if you're a three D animator or you want to get into it, and anything that you want to get into, PC literally opens up that gateway for you. And that's one thing I've always tried to stress to people, but for some reason that's not really coming over very well. <laughs> uh, well <Rare. laughs> That's actually another another argument though that some of the some of these people have against the PC is that, that about it being a, a considered a platform whenever they're talking exclusive is that you can it's not built for solely gaming. But if you look at even the new consoles, they're not even built for solely gaming either. I mean they're they're built as a multimedia center where you can do more than just gaming. Uh, so I mean that's not that's actually a, a very good positive. I mean that's one of the positives that are looking at console. Uh, but there also there's also the same positive on PC as well, as far as being able to do more than just game. Absolutely, and if you want, and oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, and if you want high end video encoding, <laughs> ba boom, get yourself a good PC, get a good capture card. You'll have videos looking a hundred times better than they look at on the actual console. Uh, if you guys look at the channel here, I have videos that are proof of that. Uh, Rambo, you've seen the uncompressed video of this. How does this thing look, man? Yes. Oh, it looks awesome, man. It looks like a hell of a lot better. I, I couldn't believe it was actually taken off of that game. It was just, uh, it was kind of a very surprising when you told me that it was actually, you know, directly, direct from that game on that, on the, uh, backwards compatibility. Yep. Oh, yeah, the Black Ops video that you have on your channel, all of them look better than the actual game looks on the 360 because of that capture card. It, it lights it better, I think. And nowadays, if you have a just, uh, I've just been using Shadowplay, and that comes, that's free if you have a basically any GPU from NVIDIA that's 700 and up. Yep. Yes, I think so. Yes, you're right. So that comes free, and that is super easy to use. I use it for all of my video capture, and it is a breeze. I, mean, I guarantee, I'd say 95% of the people who... Um, so the 12 people who are listening to this, uh, 10 of you, 10 or 11 of you probably <laughs> know how to, you, you know how to use a computer. Everyone knows how to use a computer. You already have all the information and all the knowledge to run games on a computer. You can install things and you could double click on icons. That's, there you go. It's not like you have to learn entirely new skills. You pick up this and that here and there, maybe, but you already have all the knowledge it takes it's never a, it's never the PC gaming community that says to the console gamers, you guys are too dumb to handle PC gaming. It's always, ironically, it's always the console guys who say, it's so complicated. We just don't know how to do it. We can't do it. It's always you guys who are selling yourself short when you know how to do it. That's very simple, actually. It's yeah, what's, what's the line that they use? <clears throat> Especially uh, with... just like to put the disc in and go? Is that... it's, it's actually even easier than putting the disc in and go. Because you don't have to, especially with big picture mode. And even on a desktop, I mean, I don't know if people realize this, but you just go to the store, you click a button that says buy, and then you click install, and it, I mean, there you go, it installs, and you double click, and it runs. I mean, I don't know how to describe how simple it is, other than it's just, it just works. When, when you mess with your PC enough, right? When you when you turn it on to the very point of whatever you're going to be doing whether it's something with workstation related video editing or just gaming there are going to be things that come up right you're going to see error messages that you've never seen before you're going to see situations take place on your pc that of, of you know at first you're going to be a little nervous about it but after a while of seeing these things pop up you're going to look up things to actually fix the situation and that is where the learning starts it's starts with you you actually have to look things up and research things yourself now i'm not saying yep. everything that happens on pc does this because there's been times where you know i've had no it problems whatsoever yeah it could happen but what i'm saying is it doesn't always happen and that's where these guys are i think getting you know kind of scared or yeah, intimidated hear, about it they hear about the possibility that they might actually have to spend five minutes on the google yeah. to figure out something <laughs> and that makes them afraid again they're all people are always selling themselves short but i mean i've been doing this for three years and i mean for basic for about two and a half of those i because I, I don't really take this youtube thing that seriously until you know recently but <laughs> maybe for about two years or so it's just I, I just can't recall any problem that i couldn't fix and i'm not a tech guy i'll be the first to admit i am just not a tech guy but 
you don't have to be. Most of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory. You Google your issue and there'll be 30 people telling you how to fix it. And you just do it and there you go. And usually it's Tom's hardware that pops up for the actual Yeah, that's fix. right. I always, <laughs> tell, people to I always yeah. tell people just go to Tom's hardware and if no one's asked it before, shockingly, then you then you ask it and people will tell you. Then quickly too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've gotten... I mean, I've, I've just asked just casual questions like, what's the effect of, like, do we need to get this RAM or that RAM? Or should I spend this money on this or that? And they'll tell you. They'll tell you. There's people who are there all the time. I mean, you're not alone. If you're on PC, you're not isolated. They always say you're some loner living in your mom's base. No, you're not isolated. You're not alone. You're part of the biggest gaming community on the planet. You're always hooked up to everybody. You're never alone. Not right. at all. I, I don't think I've like actually felt alone a single time that I've actually pl been playing on PC. There's always been like every time, even when it's just ra randomly in a game, there's if I'm if I'm actually playing by myself, uh, there's hundreds of people that just keep walking up to you and inviting you to their to their game or whatever and uh, to be able to play together. Yeah, you always just, get notifications. Let's play this. Let's do this. Yes. Let's do this to chat. This person's playing this and. You have to, I mean, a lot of the times I'm finding myself having to ignore notifications. Because Same here. <laughs> things happen. Right now I have 200 friend requests on Steam. Oh boy. Max, that's going to be the disappointment. Already. You haven't even accepted them all yet. <laughs> Hell no. And, I'm just going to see how of, high it goes. Speaking of, I'm one of them, so look through there. <laughs> which, one are you, which one are you? Uh, Rainbow's Corner. Of course, that would make sense. But... <laughs> yeah, kind of, probably. <laughs> well, of course, these are sorted by um, Steam level and not alphabetically, because, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, who does anything alphabetically these days? It's the miracle alphabet of the... the guy at the top <laughs> is level 83. Dear God. Jeez. He's been That's playing on it for a while. Clearly. <laughs> Shader, when it comes to the gaming, P PC gaming community, uh, are there any sort of like experiences that you could share when it comes to uh issues that you may have had with your with your pc as far as issues with my pc and the hardware there really hasn't <laughs> been... you're level eight <laughs> <laughs> the, the, there really hasn't been an issue that's been even so difficult where i had to go to tom's hardware and i mean i am a tech guy but at the same time a lot of it revolves around common sense you know like if you were to apply most of this stuff to the console world of gaming if your Xbox isn't turning on, there's only a few things it could be. You know, the same goes for PC. It's not like if something's, you know, happening. What is an Xbox not turned on? <laughs> I mean, come on. Is, is that happen? But I've had more issues with <laughs> games than anything else. Like, and it hasn't even been them not running. It's been the communities. Like League of Legends, you guys have probably heard a thousand wow. times. It's a toxic community. It's good to play with friends, but if you don't know anyone, it's kind of toxic. To stay away. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Other communities, like uh, if you play Call of Duty on PC, your community that plays that game will be relevant for a few months, and then they just drop off. Because but, uh, Call of Duty is not the only game we have to play. Exactly. There's Battlefield. There's free-to-play games that are sometimes better than Call of Duty that are populated all the time. Ghost in the Shell. <laughs> uh, is that good? Is that a good game? Yeah, actually it is. It's really good. What game is that? Dirt, Dirty Ghost Bomb in the Shell. is good. Dirty I mean, Bomb. Excellent. I can play Dirty Bomb all the time. I love that game. I'm gonna have to, sorry. I'm gonna have to pick that Dirty Bomb game up. I, it's free. I've got 302 hours. I love Dirty Bomb. I'm gonna. I saw that you were playing it earlier today. I wanted to. I wanted to actually try it out, but I never got a chance to get on there and do it. Yeah, come but when the community's there and it's a great game, I mean, it's it's amazing. Like Rambo was saying, people are constantly inviting you, and it's just Rags has got 200 friends requests. That's because people are genuinely nice. In my oh, opinion, yeah, it's because I'm popular. I, I, just, I just want to throw <laughs> no, these they're, they're nice. They're nice, man. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> wants to pet Rags' dog. That's why. I mean, yeah, my dog. That's right. That's right. Uh, don't, you mean, don't you mean? Don't you mean they want to pet Rags? That's right. Uh -huh. Yes. Can you pet Rags though? Don't you just wash with them? I'm sure Rags. I'm sure Rags will be able to go on his belly and get scratched. Right. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we we turned this into a free moment, didn't we? Yeah, I'm not going. Him, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, people tell me that I'm a furry, and it's like I didn't know. Hmm. Red rocket, red rocket. <laughs> you're, a, you're, a, you're a furry. 
It's like, oh, I've seen furry porn that didn't make me throw up, so I guess I am a furry. So <laughs> <laughs> That's how we're judging it now. Well, it's like normal porn. Normal porn could be horrible and great. So you gotta um, play. I've jerked off to some weird shit. <laughs> I'm not gonna make fun of, I'm not gonna make fun of anybody else. Uh, wow. Well. Um, I'm saying. Well, and, man, that escalated quickly. <laughs> don't you wow. act like you've never felt ashamed when you've wanked before? <laughs> I don't think. Like, I, I don't like. That. I, I mean, yeah, that's the only thing I, that comes to mind is like, what are you doing, dude? Are you doing this in the freaking public? Like, <laughs> you're like, no one's watching me, are they? <laughs> Finish faster when people watch. <laughs> of course, it's real. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, anyways. <laughs> Gotta grab the steering wheel and put it back on track there. Yeah. There's also, yeah. there's also. So remember, kid, use condoms. These games that are coming out. <laughs> What games? These games that are coming out that are saying that they like the recommended is like 16 gigabytes of RAM and uh, you know a 980 Ti or whatever they. It's horseshit. Yeah, what they, game? They, what game takes 16 gigabytes of RAM? Well, that's no, Call of no, Duty no, Ghost. That's the thing. Call of Duty Ghost. Darn, and that's the best Call of Duty. Excuse me, sir. It's all dedicated to the to the AI and the fish. Well, maybe <laughs> it would. <laughs> They have the power of the cloud. Come on. Oh, God. Oh, jeez. <laughs> when the Scorpio comes out with the highest quality pixels ever made, we won't, you won't be laughing then. So there. Ha. Wow. Jesus. Well, if you, if you look at, um, like, Quantum Break, it said, you know, 16 gigabytes of RAM was a recommended Quantum setting Break. or whatever. And I played that, and I, my RAM usage, even with... Uh, like I think seven instances of Google Chrome up and uh, running, you know, a background recording serve, you know, recording thing. I still was only using nine gigabytes of RAM, like total. And, and that's pretty crazy. Yeah, to get and it to I, nine, which really. is Google Chrome. I mean, yeah, yeah it's because of the Chrome. Yeah, the, and uh, Thanks, and that Chrome. was the thing is, like, you never use that much. So I mean, people are trying to say that you know how how costly it is because of these settings that they're putting out there. And I'm not understanding, like, why these developers are putting such ungodly settings out, you know, ungodly recommendations. I'm just gonna say I just don't know why people it just it's like printing money to put games on the computer. Why don't you just I don't get it. I, I, I just I legitimately don't understand this whole and, and this is all being said with the fact that we basically all know that even bad PC ports are much better than their console counterparts. But I just want to know why. I mean, it's there's so many people on PC, and they were ready to buy your game. Just give us a good version, decent version of your game, and you'll make a lot of money. It'll make a ton of money. Do it. Oh, Just absolutely. do it. I don't know why you're not doing it. Just do it. Well, absolutely. Somebody, somebody put a report out saying that on day one, there were 700,000 copies of uh, No Man's Sky purchased on Steam. On on day one, yeah. Yes. yes. And on you, day one. And, and that's, you, and that's, you, a lot of, that's a lot of copies on day one. Day one. And... You saw the comments yeah. too, though, right? Like that—that that was yeah, another were... weird situation where, like, the guy and actually not getting refunds either. No, no, exactly. The thing is, is they freaking put their game out for older hardware to run. How weird is it? And this is the first time I've ever heard of this. Rags, uh, Shaner, maybe you guys have heard of this, but I've never heard of a game not running good with higher end hardware than the required spec that it needs to run at minimum. I think that's a little strange. What do you guys think? Definitely um, strange. I don't. It's really. I mean, again, tech's not my not my forte. But I've got a really strong computer, so normally, if a game doesn't run well, it's it's so it's a it's very anomalous if it doesn't run really well. So what I mean by that is, I mean anything that Bohemia Interactive makes, and the occasional just really bad port. But even then, a lot of the times, you, you I just power my way through it. Yeah, absolutely. Without my precious optimization. <laughs> Well, I just think it's strange that, like, it, you know, you can have a high-end system like see, either yours or Shaner's, and then you pop in No Man's Sky, and it's, like, crawling at, like, five frames well, per see, second. Well, no, that's, that's not... And they fix that, that's too. Not, but that's not what's happening, though. No, that at launch, that's what was happening. Yeah, at launch, launch, that was happening, and they are, and then... What was they it? fixed they it quick, very quickly. They fixed it? Yeah. They, they yeah, fixed it day one, then, because I played it, like, that evening of day one, and I have a 980 Ti and uh, 32 gigs of RAM and a i7 6700K. NVIDIA's newest legacy card. Uh, I, I 
I was actually playing at 60 frames per second. It would occasionally drop to zero, like for a second, and then like pick, pick right back up to 60. But that's all. It would, that's all. The only thing I ever noticed is it would just do that randomly. 60 frames per second's okay, I guess. But I, I, I had it locked. I had it locked at. I had it locked at 60 though. Well, yeah. our bare minimum is like the highest possible thing you could get on console. That's uh, the their best is our bare minimum, 1080p, 60 FPS. That says a lot. Notwithstanding, notwithstanding notebooks, of course, that you carry with you, you know. Right. right. Um, but I always tell people if you want to get something to start, 1080p, 60, it's gonna be it's, you're gonna it's gonna be hard to not get that if you just buy stuff. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. Um, that, I mean, hell, get that pretty cheap too. 1060 is a competent 1440p card, and that's 250 bucks. Someone tweeted a picture out with a picture of the 1060, and they said, "I got that 250 dollars Scorpio." Ouch! Oh god! I wonder what shit that started. Uh, uh, digital foundry man. price didn't yeah. you? I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't no know. man's sky. And you know, let me. Uh, no Man's Sky is at a fifty-four percent positive rating on Steam right now. Fifty-four percent. Yeah, it, it hasn't um, moved from there. They've actually. Uh, it's been st staying steady. Um, it'll. Yeah. It'll actually get better over time. I'm, you're gonna start seeing people go into the comments and uh, start editing. Yeah, a reviews. lot of this. A lot of a lot this of will be for um of, for like the the state of its launch. Um. Now, of course, that's fixed now, but people have already written their reviews. And, of course, now Steam has the recent, the last 30 days worth of reviews and the total, the legacy reviews. So in a month's time, we'll see how it does. Um, I'm pretty curious to see. I haven't bought it. It doesn't. I keep hearing it doesn't have that much. It's really kind of boring and repetitive. Right. It, um, it, I mean, it was obviously a lot of uh, controver or controversy that's surrounding the whole, you can do this and you can do that, and it turns out, well, maybe well, not so much. Well, like so, I'm going to speak as somebody who, who's, who plays a lot of creation games, because I do. I, I love creation games. Um, I'm going to say this. Me too, Giggity. They, <laughs> right, they honestly advertised it for what it was. They did not sit there and tell you that this was going to be the next Eve Online. They didn't say that this oh, was going to no, be... Oh, no, they were very... No, I disagree vehemently. Really? They said this was going to be the next oh, Eve Online? They said they exactly would, that? They, will be t they, didn't say, oh, not, they didn't specifically say Eve Online. They're not dumb enough to compare it to write proper PC games. Um, but the thing... Total Biscuit did a video about it where he, ca he talked about a lot of the stuff that they said in interviews and in articles where they talked about things like, you know, we're not going to say there's multiplayer, but you might run into other players and things like that. They talked about how it was oh, this that infinite part, world that it was part. procedurally generated and you'll be just... And then it turned out to be just a bunch of reuse things over and over and he kept finding the same thing over and over. Uh, but he did a really good video on it and it, it talks about a lot of that stuff and how there was a lot of insinuation that this game would be something that it really was kind of not that much. Well, but as far as the multiplayer aspect, they go, I could care less. That's what I was going to get at anyways, is I could care less if it's multiplayer or single player. You know, I've played a lot of these creation games by myself anyway, so it's not a big heartbreak to me. Is it wrong for them to advertise it as such? Then yes, it is. It's messed up. They shouldn't have been misleading people in the overall uh, grand scheme of things. I mean, you can go onto YouTube, and I bet if I type in No Man's Sky multiplayer confirmed, then they will. Um, no Man's Sky Online multiplayer mode is on the roadmap. This two weeks ago, three months ago. Update to ground view multiplayer teases. No Man's Sky PvP confirmed. Um, Sean Murray talks No Man's Sky multiplayer. No Man's Sky multiplayer confirmed. Um, multiplayer confirmed. Um, Sean Murray, and then a week ago, Sean Murray lying about multiplayer for No Man's Sky. Well, right. Oh, so, like I said, it, like I said, it's wrong for them to advertise it for anything, you know, less than what it is or more than it is. I'm just saying when it comes to these kind of games, I could care less if there's multiplayer in it or not. It doesn't bother me. Uh, the thing that I don't, I mean, like I said, I don't really care. The whole premise of the game though was exploration unlocking certain spot, spots of the of the worlds uh discovering new areas that was the whole point of the game right and yeah. everybody and everybody who buys it is like all i've the done is explore them. all i've done is discover things like really no shit that was the whole point of it like you bought the game thinking it was gonna be and i understand the multiplayer part again the argument there you it's valid 
But again, you know, this is going to be a game that's going to be patched over time. Now, should we have gotten all these features at the very beginning? Absolutely. I would agree with anybody who says that. But again, it's also based on an opinion of the, of the, of the it's in the user's eye. You know what I mean? Me personally being the day one buyer that I was for that game on the PlayStation 4, I didn't care. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. It doesn't have multiplayer. So what? Fucking, oh, well, I don't have to worry about some asshole fucking around with me then. I don't care. Yeah, I've um, yeah, I've got over a thousand hours in Daisy. I'll, uh, games that don't have multiplayer, they um, they have a special. <laughs> <in heart. laughs> well, you said Daisy, and that's your first fucking mistake because that game's trash anyway. Yeah, so you're like running uh, alongside of a road, yeah, only to be shot at the end of the road. Walking saying, Simulator Rex? 2016, huh, Rex? Oh, there there is no end of the road. <laughs> 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 I tell people when I talk about, I'm making a video now actually about Seven Days to Die, and um, and I compare it to DayZ a lot because these games are in the same genre, but they're basically polar opposites. One looks like shit, but it's full of things to do. The other looks good, but it's full of fuck all. Um, <laughs> <and> Great analogy. <laughs> one has zombies at work. One has zombies, technically. One has one is you're you're constantly doing things that aren't terribly exciting, but you're always doing them. And the other game is you're doing nothing except for those moments where you are doing something where you shit yourself. So there's there's a lot of there's a, I mean these games are they really juxtapose each other really well. Um, I still think I think Seventy Die is a better game, but maybe it says something that I have. Fuck, what is it? A thousand one hundred hours in Daisy. How did I Damn. do that? 1,067 hours. How did I do that? That was 1,067 hours. That something must have kept me going back. God damn. <laughs> Yo, all those hours, man, you can't even think of one thing that makes well, you I mean, return I know, what it, I know what it is. In all, in all seriousness, I know what it is that kept me coming back to Day Z. It was... What I tell people is, by Day Z, if you're willing to put up with a buggy, crashy laggy shit game but where there is a huge potential for you to have some of the most intense heart pounding hand trembling experiences you've ever felt in a video game because you know you have that looming threat in your head that if you get shot dead and you die you're so it's all gone it's all lost you got to start all over again and you know that one bullet could spell your doom and you know you have limited resources and when everything lines up when all the stars are in the sky when everything works as it should and you have those tense firefight moments or even when you just see a guy and you kind of wait and wait and get that one shot off and take him out you feel so satisfied you feel so good about yourself not like in a moral sense i mean like you feel so like like holy shit i just did that you know, this is Daisy, and I just I took out another player. Now I can get his stuff, and it it's those few moments, those few and far between short lived moments that make you feel as if the two hours of walking on the pavement simulator were worth it. Hmm. And I think a lot of people still stick around with it because they've been sold the idea of the finished product, and it is obvious that Bohemia Interactive is working very hard on it. Yes, they say we're trying to do it right. We're trying to do it the way we want it to to run. It's very complicated. The systems we're trying to put in place, development is slow. We swapped engines. It runs better now. And I mean, I don't think it's a cash grab or anything. But god damn, it's been almost out for three years now on Steam. <laughs> I think I think December is gonna be, this December is gonna be the three year <coughs> anniversary. Oh, but. Wow. Let's I mean, let's talk about another thing that you know. Speaking of like No Man's Sky uh, with the the uh, optimization or whatever for the PC or how it runs is that's one thing that's actually the, gr the greatest thing about PC is that when a developer doesn't fall through, doesn't follow through with their game and update their game, the PC community will come back and actually fix it for them. Oh, well, well, the, well there's two things that actually that happen there, there uh, Rambo. It's not just fixing it for them. But if we can't fix it, we will fucking chastise that developer off of PC market. Oh yeah, yes. Well, I mean, yeah. That's that's another. That's yeah. That's the opposite reaction of it. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, look at we're, we can just take Deadpool, uh, the remaster or whatever for instance on console. Uh, whenever you actually start the game out and you, I think you maybe get like ten minutes into it, you're going down a slide, 
And when every time you're going on a slide, almost every two seconds, the game just stops. Like completely stops. And it'll start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And every time you're in a fight, same thing. Um, that developer's gone. They're not, Activision's not coming back fixing it. They're the publisher of it, of course, but the developer's gone. So that game is just the way it is. But People have PC, a very real monetary interest a very real financial business interest in making decent PC games because the money is there. All the money's there, but they're going to have to, I mean, and plus, I mean, you look at the 54% of uh, no man's sky approval on, um, the PC. That's because I think PC players have a much higher standard for what we like and don't like. Right, and we don't sit there and necessarily accept mediocrity at every point. No, we don't. We don't because we have so many games to play that we actually can can actually choose. Like you know, hey, do we is this actually worth this money? I mean, should you know? Well, it's like it's it's like same as console. It's like what we were saying, Rambo, earlier. Like there there are free to play games that are sometimes better than what you pay for. And some oh, people yeah. and some people will actually go as far on console and say, "Well, you get what you pay for." And like, no, not necessarily. You not necessarily I mean? at all. Like Warframe, absolutely, game. yeah, absolutely amazing. Like, yeah, Warframe's a it, it's Even not it's a better to win, but well, yeah, you could just do co-op only though, so you oh, can well, even okay. avoid that. You can even avoid that. Um, Dirty Bomb, totally fair model, totally fair business model, completely fair, and you like there's nothing you can get in Dirty Bomb that you can't get without paying. Absolutely, and the same um, thing with Ghost in the Shell. And it works. Yep. Um, so both of those games, Warframe, uh, Dirty Bomb, there's other stuff. I'm not big into the free-to-play uh, stuff. Or just, I'm not at the moment. But there's a lot of high-quality free-to-play. Free-to-play doesn't mean cheap. No. It doesn't mean it's a low-budget production. Oh, I did look up, by the way, um, No Man's Sky PC. Now, I'm using Metacritic, so take it with a grain of salt. But there are enough ratings to where normally the trolls balance out. No Man's Sky for PC has 958 user ratings. It's at 3.1 out of 10. Ouch. Right? No Man's Sky for PlayStation 4. 4,191 ratings. 4.9 out of 10. So basically, it's right in the middle, and there are 585 positive reviews, 464 negatives, and only 130. So people either love it or hate it, really, is what it's looking like. Whereas on the PC, it's 3.1 out of 10. Well, yeah, you guys were saying the PC gamer standards, you know, are different, obviously, than the console gamers. Yeah. I mean, look at the Batman Arkham Knight launch. I mean, they gave everyone their money back eventually. Oh, yeah, because they, well, they knew they had to. I mean, it was, it was almost like, um, it, was their, their, it was their only saving grace to be able to come back to and make another game for the PC. Uh, yeah, because that's how they, aggressive that we all were with them. If you bought that game, you were pissed and you let them know it. I mean, look at well, look at Microsoft. I mean, you can take Microsoft for an. I mean, a big example here. When that when uh, Windows Ten Gaming launched, there was no dual GPUs. Uh, there was no um, your your uh, what is it? I, we're I not just going to go point. along with it if it's a shit service. We're not yes. comp players. We won't just go with it. Their uh, VSync was locked. You could not take it off. Uh, there was there were so many things that I mean, it was almost like a con like a just a little bit higher version of a console game. Uh, it's where you had barely any choices to it, but we said, "Look, you you keep doing this, and we're not buying it. We're you know you're you're done." And look at, I mean, that's Quantum Break's a big example how they launched it. That was their first actual true launch title, and it's now on Steam because they didn't make any money off of Windows 10, and that's because us as PC gamers, we stood up to them and said, "Look, we're not taking this. We are not going to support you. You will be ran out of uh, PC gaming just like you were before with Windows Live." And exactly, games for Windows Live. We we didn't put up with it, so it went away. Yeah, we we ran them out of we ran Microsoft out of PC. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's their market. That, though. Because that's dumb, and we didn't do it. Yeah, see, but there's a flip side to that though, because console gamers can't do that because the developer, the publisher, they know well you're screwed. You can't go anywhere else if you want to play this, you know. And there's yeah. not that much to choose from, so you're going to put up with it. We don't. They, in a, in a sense, I can. I, you're in a big sense. You're actually correct on that because they they are limited, especially with how much of a voice they do have. But ultimately, their wallet is their voice, and even even like paying, we use it, 
paying for Xbox Live or paying for PlayStation Plus or even buying some of these games that they're... I mean, how many times do you hear, I'm not buying the next Call of Duty? The Call of Duty sucks. And then every well, we year... we hear it all the time, but they... Every year, it's the number one selling game. Yeah. I, I say so, it I mean, every, every year. It's just like drugs. You're... You, you can't avoid Call of Duty. I gave up. I gave up. Brimstone says it every year. I gave up on saying that shit, man. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to buy that game next year. And next year's like, oh, look, it's on Kingwin for 15 bucks in the first month. <laughs> oh, I'm so buying this shit. But you see, I mean, you hear that, and they call, uh, from the, a, lot of, a, lot of the, a lot of them are the, from the console community, and they buy it. They turn around. So, I mean, they're, they're um, what am I trying to say? Their words they don't, don't match. Have, their words don't match their actions. I would say that overall, a console, the console community's ability to exercise self-control is lesser than the average PC gamers. Yeah, I could agree with that, but I think it also has something to do with, like you were saying, we have a bunch to play. You know, console, oh yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, so a, that's, a big, that's a big thing to deal with. It. Yes, for it's sure. It's a little easier for some PC gamers, I think, because they're like, "Well, that's okay. I'll, I'll just go play this." Well, well, you... let's uh, let, let, let's talk about. Okay, so we got this down pretty much. Let's talk about why console gaming exists, real quick. All right. Now, to me, console gaming existed at the beginning was to give us all exclusive, you know, games and give us those unique experiences. Uh, it gave developers less room to work with. But it made developers break down and figure out well, strategies I, I to get this to work right. You know what I mean? I think that's what it became from when it was originally created back in its early, early days. Right. That's well, back when it's early, early days, that's when everything was. In. Yeah, that's where everything was still being discovered. But I'm saying, as far as standards go, like we, we, I think you and I had this uh, discussion already. Uh, the room for improvement is there today. But it seems like to me we are more worried about timelines and scheduling to when these games are going to be launched more so on console than we are on any other platform. About the console itself. Even. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's ridiculous. Which is why I hate exclusives so much. Well, I told you the other day, this is the I want it now generation. They don't absolutely. want to wait <clears throat> at all. I want it November of 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna but be great guys. When you look what at we when, talk, what case are we talking about? I don't. Huh? What's what comes out in November two thousand seventeen? Oh, I don't Scorpio. know. I'm just, I, I don't probably know. The probably next Call of Duty after Infinity Warfare. The last Infinity generation Warfare. of Xbox. Okay, so let's cover that before we do our closing. Uh, we're at for the forty-seven minute mark, so let's talk about the last generation of Xbox. Me personally, I don't think this will be their last generation i know they said it i know they're like oh we're looking at possibly pulling out look mm. they've stated something like that before with the 360 when that, that catastrophe happened if they microsoft had, says something don't believe it pretty much don't believe it until they do it pretty, don't believe it till they do it absolutely i agree with that because right now as and me and rambo and shader here have already dug actually i, I actually showed rags this uh the last time we talked the numbers show that every company is operating around the same exact loss except i think nintendo's like far worse than all of them <laughs> yeah i heard nintendo's not doing that great because i think not going to get it all right so rambo you i know you don't remember the exact numbers but how much was the profit between nintendo microsoft and sony were they really at think... a good profit or were they mostly at a loss well nintendo didn't have a profit at all no profit. Um, yeah. Microsoft, Microsoft, and Sony had around. Actually, Sony had a little bit more. I think they were in like the twenty thousand uh, dollar market for the profit, and, so, and Microsoft was around. I think it was like thirteen thousand. Out, out of all, the, out of everything. So I mean, that's that's okay. That so before anybody, before anybody goes crazy and says, "Oh my God, they're making more money than that." No, you have to understand. This is with every single deduction that that corporation is expensing out. Sony As isn't a total. just PlayStation. Microsoft isn't just Xbox. Absolutely. Yes, this is, yes, absolutely. This is, a, a, this is, this is everything. This is over absolutely everything. We're talking about Nami court is not cases. Just the Chinko machines. Right, right, right. <laughs> it, this is after court cases that Microsoft are handling. This is after all of the issues that Sony went through with their server uh, problems that they had. I mean, this payroll. is all payroll, the whole deduction thing. That is literally what is going on, which I thought was interesting because we are all led to believe that these guys on profit are making millions upon millions. 
But when you when you take all their deductions out, you take out the court cases, the court fees for this, you talk about licensing deals with this guy over here, or their big expedi uh, expeditioners, like, you don't see those numbers usually. And we saw that through the shareholder uh, paperwork that we got when we looked them up online. And I found that really interesting. But Definitely interesting. <clears throat> it is because I, I even had a podcast today. I was trying to explain because they were talking about how much money Nintendo makes. I was trying to explain to them that they're they're really not, and um, they didn't want to take into they didn't want to look at the consideration of how much money they're actually selling out to all the you know their payroll, everything you know everything yeah, together. They're making a lot, but they're losing more. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is that you sure you can look at their financials and see how much they're making, but you got to also take into account how much money they're spending. Um, it's not just a money making machine. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because during the um, what was it though? During the Wii sales, when we were looking at that, they were literally in the billions. That was lit That was after everything was taken out. Now look at them. <laughs> like it's a huge difference. Like you said, I mean, Rambo, your car's worth more, dude. Yeah, and that's that's the sad part. That was uh, and that, it, it just kind of blew my mind to see how much actually is there. In, I guess the state of gaming as it is right now, and they keep pumping out more and more consoles, these more and more of these games that are just yearly, annually, and it, it takes me back to whenever I was actually younger, and the, you know the, the the market actually crashed um, because of so many you know crappy games and so many uh, consoles on the market, it crashed and it burned, and then of course Nintendo came in and and fixed that, but. I'm just hoping we don't we don't you know see history repeat itself because it seems that they're not actually learning anything from their past mistakes. Yeah, competition is great, but oversaturating something is horrible. Yes, and that's and what it, seems to happen. Right that happens again. It will. Yeah, true. things will weed itself out, and that's. I mean, think. Look at all. Even in let's look at video game genres. Look at all the survival games and crafting games there are. I mean, there's a lot of them that just one plays them because they just can't stand up to everything else because there's so many first person shooters how many first person shooters just die they come out and they're dead in a week two weeks look what happened with evolve for instance yes. free to play and it went to free <laughs> it went to free and now they're saying that they're at record high profits exactly that's amazing there's, to me <laughs> I was yeah, like, wow. there's, um there you go no free to play games suck and you know what's funny is all these guys are claiming that these free-to-plays suck. They don't realize that Neverwinter, Hawken, Smite. I've heard those are good. All came good. from PC. Guess what? They're both on the Xbox One and the PS4. Huh. Yeah. But it no, uh, sucks. The PC gets all the ports. No. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're coming to the end of the video, you guys. Uh, so yes, we are. It is coming up to the 52 minute mark. So everybody go ahead and do your closing starting with rags. Um, oh, my closing. Um, let me see if I could, um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this. I, I just can't wait. <laughs> All right. Look, my closing statement is that no matter what you do, Jesus loves you. So even if you play on Xbox or PlayStation or I don't even know. I mean, I did the Jesus thing. Just <laughs> um, Kali, the the great goddess Kali loves you. Wow. Okay. Um, she wants you to play Overwatch. <laughs> what the fuck? You, oh, if I had a dollar for every time. Oh, yeah. Here's some. Uh, stop asking me. Um, stop asking me stupid questions on Twitter that you can Google, please. I don't mean to be an asshole. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean to be an asshole, but when you ask me, how much does a razor gaming chair cost? <laughs> what the fuck? Google it. Holy shit! In the 1930s, they would write science fiction stories about machines that could give you the sum total of all human knowledge, and now it's reality. And people are asking other people as they sit on that same machine, "When much does a razor gaming chair cost?" Guys, just come on. Also, don't ask me about. Don't ask me about specs and tech and stuff like that. It's not my thing. That's more. That's more uh, my field. Also, no. Don't ask me if I played Overwatch. I haven't played Overwatch. Hey, have you played Overwatch though? Um, yes, I actually have. Okay. Uh, okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Rags closing. Rambo, go for it. 
My favorite character in Overwatch that. is my favorite character in Overwatch is the Protoss. Um, <laughs> really, really like Dude, none of us can follow that. You might as well just cut it here. <laughs> uh, that brings me back. <laughs> Rebel. Oh, by the way, oh, by the way, the guy, the guy who um who who sent me the picture of the one hundred fifty dollar Xbox controller, and then I tweeted him back the fifteen dollar mouse and keyboard. He retweeted it and said, "PC gamers exposed." <laughs> Wow. So, if you feel the breeze between your knees, guys, that is because we've been exposed. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Rambo, go wow. for it before uh, he starts talking again. Well, well um, yo, know, I, I really don't know how to follow that. I, you know, it was Rambo. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun, and it was actually a pretty good cast. I actually enjoyed it. I hope you all did. Uh, if you did, leave a like and let us know. Shayner. Yeah, guys, this was a lot of fun. I can't wait to do it again. Make sure to go check out all of our channels. I'm sure they're in the description below. And uh, thanks for having me, Brim. Oh, yeah. Speaking of that, though, just real quick, if you haven't heard of Rags, you know, you, you might want to check him out. You know, he's he's like kind of a little guy on YouTube. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <buddy's on Netflix. laughs> no, no, don't. I got enough on my plate right now. Hey, whose channel is this going to be on? Brimstone's Gaming. Oh, Gaming. Oh, yeah. Dislike and unsubscribe. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, this is Brimstones Gaming here. Uh, this is a, like I said, this is the first episode, more like, should I say, I don't this know, is, podcast the, with training this, wheels? I don't know what to call this. Definitely this training is the wheels. Episode. This is the episode. So, yeah, they, they want to know. This, the, this <laughs> is. <laughs> just remember, guys, we did pop shots at some of the stuff here, but just because we're joking around doesn't mean we are actual gaming Nazis. I actually like my Xbox One. I'm probably like the only one in this I call. I sleep with it every night. Well, Shader does too. I think me and Shader are the only two that actually enjoys their Xboxes. So, leave. I guess put whatever you want into that for what it is. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see this live, if you guys want to see our next episode live, if we do make it that far, uh, please comment down below and tweet at, tweet at us at Twitter forward slash rags, either Rambo's Corner, Geek Essentials, or myself as Brimstone. Anyway, see you guys. Alternatively, if you want to see this dead, then uh, comment as well and let us know too. I'm going to get the flip side of that. If you, want to, if you want to kill it with fire... That's right. The Clorox cocktail. Let us know. Because <laughs> it's not gay unless you look him in the eye. There we go. <laughs> okay, we're out. <laughs> oh. <laughs>